Hello, you're tuned into the Business Intelligence Network. Thank you for joining us. I'm Claudia Imhoff, and we're here today at the TDWI show in a beautiful San Diego, California. Now, joining me today is Dave Inbar. Dave is the Director of Worldwide Marketing for Pervasive Software. Thanks for joining me, David. Good morning. Good to be here. It's good to have you here. Now, I've been involved with a, a number of VI projects over the years, and it always seems like data quality is probably one of the most important critical success factors that anybody can have in a VI project. And yet, data quality is sometimes an afterthought. They don't even think about it until they've implemented something. So I guess my first question to you is, why is it an afterthought, and how do we get it up front a little bit better than we have in the past? Well, it's a great question, and we ask ourselves that question a lot. We ask our customers that question a lot. And it, three of the themes that, that come up on a recurring basis is, number one, the people that are responsible for the BI or integration project are not necessarily the people who are going to end up consuming the output of that project. And yes. therefore, they're not directly in touch with the pain that often comes with poor data or incomplete data. Right. They don't hear about it until someone uses until it. Until downstream. Right. And, and that, that's a big deal. And second big factor, which is related to that, is uh, preconceptions about how much effort is going to take to get there. The assumption is, well, the data is a little bit dicey, mm -hmm. but maybe it's not that bad, and we think that it's going to be a huge task to get it to be any better. So maybe we can get by for now and address it later. So there's the let's push it off to later syndrome. The third one um, really has to do with visibility that so often you don't have visibility on the nature and quality of your data unless you deliberately go and investigate it, audit it, profile it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. It also seems to have some kind of cultural or organizational boundary crossing problems as well. And it seems like overall it, it, there's not a real hard and fast return on investment or ROI. Maybe that's part of the problem. Do you think that people are, or projects that try to come up with some kind of an ROI and can't, uh, is that part of the problem? Or are there other things that they ought to be looking at in terms of, of what should they measure in terms of the benefit or the things they should be focusing on other than ROIs? Well, uh, another great question. So, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, and, and, and one that customers effectively ask us or prospective customers and they say, well, we, we see the rationale for taking action in this area. We'd like to do it. How can we justify to our organization the effort that's going to be involved? Huge effort. And huge effort mm -hmm. and very hard, very often to quantify the benefits because the benefits are about uh, better understanding, agility, better decision-making, decision yeah, right? and all those so things. Hard to measure. <laughs> that actually are worth a lot, oh, yes. but yes. very hard to measure. So we tend to focus and try and help people to focus on what are the costs going to be of attacking or tackling the problem. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about sizing it? How do you go about scoping it and maybe taking a, a limited effort at the beginning, a limited domain area, and doing some investigation and pilot pilot efforts to try and understand what's going on with your data and what it really looks like and learn from that in terms of how, how acute is the problem now, how acute could it be in the future and get to understand that and use, use the tools as a vendor we're always going to say that of course, of course. <laughs> but use the tools to try and understand the problem and highlight it quickly and then make your decisions on that basis. Yeah. It, it does seem like if you can't measure something, you can't improve it. So what I'm hearing is I can certainly determine the cost and the baseline data quality. Now I need to figure out where I want to go from there. And that's better to focus on those things than it is some return on investment that may or may not come to pass. Absolutely. So, so try, and, try and get a, a handle on the problem. Don't make it too big a project. Uh, try and find ways of tackling the problem or the, the, the potential symptoms quickly. So 
to try, you've got, you've got limited skilled resources that are probably stretched over a number of high priority projects. Is there a way that you can release somebody to take a look at that Small relatively steps. quickly? Small steps, Small steps. Uh, without too much complexity. All right, well, now let's, let's turn our attention to a different thing. Most of the time we see data integration projects going hand in hand with data quality projects. They seem to, it seems to be a logical matching, if you will. Can they be tackled independently or, or do they depend on each other? Well, I, I, I think it's true to say that a lot of the time data integration projects surface ah, yes. the data quality problem. Without a doubt. <laughs> So most of the time you're going to see that sequential kind of uh, association and data integration project is either proposed mm -hmm. and then data quality comes up as an issue or more likely the data integration project uh, gets on the way and then the deliverables start to get a little longer and a little more problematic because data quality issues surface. But there is no need for them to, to be locked together. They, I think data quality is something that can be tackled independently of data integration. But again, it goes back to the ROI does, and the <laughs> organizational imperative. Right. So right. it's probably fair to say that they're, they're very closely bound to one another. Yeah. Um, and and as more systems become need to be integrated, more data quality issues are going to arise. All right. Well, let's talk about the last topic uh, or the last area that I, I find problematic as well, uh, and that's metadata. The whole effort of creating metadata, usually technical metadata by and large, but it, it, it is, it, it's a huge effort, and I don't know that companies are really – uh, seeing the benefit of all of this effort of creating metadata and making it accessible and so forth and so on. Why, why do you think that there, there just isn't a, a, a real ROI or benefit there to, to all of this effort of creating metadata? And what approach would you take then in, to, to make this more beneficial to the organization? So, uh, Again, metadata is, is in many ways a bigger challenge than data quality, mm. but again, they're, they're related. And I think the biggest challenge with, with metadata is that it's ultimately created by a variety of different tools yes. and application systems that are in use in the organization. That an enterprise-wide approach to it is in, in some ways an ideal but relatively few organizations can benefit from that, unless you have a very homogeneous business organization as opposed to relatively independent business units that are running somewhat different businesses. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's very, it's almost impossible to think of an enterprise-wide effort. Uh, so you, you then start breaking it down, and again, you end up, as with integration, you can end up integrating your metadata. Uh, and we've seen some companies try to do that, and by and large, we don't recommend it. And we don't recommend it because Yet another data integration it's another project. integration <laughs> project. Well, we love integration projects, but yeah. we're not going to recommend things that we think aren't going to be very beneficial. Understood. So I think one of, again, from a technical perspective, one of the challenges with those things is that, is that applications and systems and requirements change relatively frequently, mm -hmm. and a lot of the metadata initiatives um, are under-resourced, either technically or in terms of people, to maintain the metadata store, the relationships, and everything else adequately. Well, do people just throw up their hands and say, okay, I'm not going to go after metadata, or do you see some way that we can see the light at the end of this tunnel? I think... Uh, what I'm seeing is that is that companies are putting more pressure on the vendors ah. to make metadata more readily accessible, to make it more easily shareable, to make it more transparent. And I think that that's the way to go. I just don't think it's reasonable to ask most organizations to build their own metadata uh -huh. processes and maintenance and everything else. So it's up to the vendors. 
okay, clients out there, talk to your vendors. <laughs> That's what I heard loud and clear. David, thanks so much for spending some time with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure for me as well. Again, this is Claudia Imhoff. Thanks for listening, and goodbye from the Data Warehousing Institute in San Diego.